Mr. Mayor, do you, do you feel that, um, considering what the CDC said today, that either they did or on the local level that anyone overreacted to this? I mean, they're saying 14 days on Sunday and three days later, or two days later, I guess they come back and they say, open them. It's a huge difference. Well, it was actually Friday when they changed the guidance to 14 days. And I think, uh, I think that they were being cautious, and I think they were being prudent. And the decision that we made early on was that we were going to follow the science. So we were going to follow and trust the Centers for Disease Control. And, and I'm happy that we did that. I think that that was the right decision. Uh, I want to echo what Dr. Swain said. This, this disease, or this flu, is still widespread. So I think there, but for the grace of God, we could be standing before you with a situation where, we're, we're, where we are reporting deaths. I am very pleased that is not the scenario that we are in. Um, I will say that just before I came over here, I saw where the Texas officials uh, announced that a woman had died in addition to the, the infant that had died last week. I mentioned that, not to alarm people, but again, to let people know that this is a serious situation. She had other complications, and so for people who have difficulties, more difficulties, this, again, could be a life-threatening situation. And oftentimes people say, well, We've got all these people who have normal seasonal flu. Bear in mind that we, we also see 36,000 deaths per year because of the seasonal flu. But I think that this was a, uh, a situation because it was a new virus, because there is no immunity to it, because there are no vaccines for it, that the CDC was doing what it felt was correct. And so I'm, I'm not going to criticize the CDC for that. Uh, in fact, if I had to do it again, I would, I would follow its guidance again. And what do you say? Excuse me. If I can just add one more thing, um, as far as the 14 days, my bet is that if the CDC was still recommending school closure, it would be for 14 days. If you're going to close a school, it makes sense based on the incubation period, the duration of illness, to close it for 14 days. The CDC isn't saying that 14 days was too long. They're saying that at this point, it appears that the illness isn't severe enough to warrant school closure at all. Do you recommend that rec centers and things like that reopen now too, or should they remain closed? Yes, no, they should reopen as well. You know, we were putting the emphasis now on the individual. On the individuals, we're asking individuals to self-monitor and if they are sick, to stay at home. We're asking parents to be vigilant. If their child is sick, please keep your child at home. Parents have been being told now for about a week that this is very serious. There's still a lot of concern among parents in the community. What do you say to those people who just two days ago were being told their kids can't go to school, now send them back? There could be some confusion about whether or not that's actually safe. Well, and we trust you. We trust the media because you've all attended these briefings every day. And we've been very, very forthcoming with you in terms of all the information that we've had, we've shared with you. Uh, and even on Sunday, when we talked about the 14 days, I said at that point that the recommendations for the CDCs were that these schools would be closed up to 14 days. I cautioned us at that time because, as I said at that time, it was my hope, and my hope has come to fruition, that, the, that we would not see the disease being so severe that the centers would be able to change their guidance. And, and I commend the centers for, for having the flexibility to do that. But as Dr. Swain said, the 14-day issue deals with the duration of the disease, but the CDC's uh, recommendation is based on is the severity of the disease. Now, it is also my hope that we don't see this virus mutate into another form where it becomes more deadly, which would put us potentially back in the same situation. On a local level, can you give us some guidance as to what determines how severe this strain was? In other words, did you look at how many people had to go to the hospital? What kinds of things were you using to determine whether this was severe enough to close schools and what's severe enough to open? I think you said last week that 8% nationally were in the hospital. Was that the same number here? Well, what we've seen actually is that the national number of hospitalization rates has been going down every, every day or two. And right now it's down in more in the neighborhood of 3 to 4%. Now that's still three or four times higher than what the regular seasonal flu would be. But what happens in an epidemic is that at the beginning of an epidemic, we tend to find more severe cases. And then as we find more and more cases, they tend to be less severe. And so the severity rate appears to be going down just based on who we find first. 
what we were seeing, though, at the beginning was what was happening out of Mexico with a lot of reports of hospitalizations and deaths. So that's what we've been paying attention to, both locally and nationally, hospitalization rates and deaths. And those hospitalization rates have been trending more towards regular seasonal flu. I wouldn't be surprised if they end up right around seasonal flu. And we haven't seen a big spike in deaths. What, what is that number out of the 93 cases on the hospital locally? Um, I don't have that precisely, but if you follow the national um, the average, you'd expect it to probably be in the neighborhood of two hundred. So how many of the, the probable cases are confirmed now in Milwaukee? Sorry, yeah, we, yes, we still, of, of all those probables, only two are confirmed. Um, I expect that by next week, you'll we'll start to see many of these probable numbers being replaced by confirms. Um, but again, I, I stress, from a practical point of view, a probable is as good as a confirmed. And I also think you're going to see a situation where there's going to be less testing yes. as it becomes more widespread because the, the newness of it is not going to be as alarming. Dr. Swain, last week MPS cleaned, I think, five schools. Should schools, should buses, should daycare, should they be going through some sort of extensive cleaning before tomorrow? That's an excellent question. The, the CDC does recommend a routine cleaning. They don't recommend disinfection or sterilization or uh, someone I heard use the word decontamination too. This is all too good, but cleaning makes sense. And I would say not just before tomorrow, but I would say on an ongoing basis. Remember, we do have this disease circling in, in our community. And so I think on a regular basis, people should, especially for frequently touched surfaces, surfaces in these congregate settings, schools, and daycares, it makes sense to be uh, a little aggressive about cleaning. Not, you know, no disinfection is necessary, but regular cleaning more frequently. What do you say about the, the pace of the, the spread of uh, the flu at this point? Is it uh, meeting your expectations? Is it, is it above what you expected? Uh, it's, uh, I'd say the, the influenza both locally and nationally is spreading quickly, and um, it, it's not surprising to me as a public health professional knowing that there's no immunity because it's a brand new virus. I think it's what we should expect, but it is spreading rapidly. How about people in their workplaces? Do you also recommend that people stay home from work for seven days and any workplaces that close should they at this point consider it safe to reopen? I'm sorry, this is the second half of the question. Just any workplaces that had sent employees home, um, should they consider it safe just as the schools? So our guidance for workplaces would be very much the same as what we said for schools. People who are ill should stay home. They should stay home for seven days and at least 24 hours after their symptoms resolve, which are much longer. Um, but then they can go back to work. I'm not aware of businesses that have closed, but if businesses have closed, then the same as schools, they should, in my opinion, feel free to reopen, but ill people should stay home. Mayor, do you have any idea, and I don't know if you have any concern, that uh, enrollment will be low the rest of this week, or attendance, I guess I should say, um, because of maybe whether it's mixed signals or people said, well, good, it's closed the week, I'm getting out of town. Would you encourage parents to, to, to go back? Well, we have seen a drop in attendance in some Milwaukee public schools, even those schools that have remained open. Uh, and I think that could be one of two factors. One could be your kids who are sick, and if they're sick, I want them to be home. I think there probably are some parents who may be keeping their children home in fear that their children would get sick. So I would hope in those situations, and I would expect, again, we're asking parents, if your child is showing flu-like symptoms, keep your child at home. Uh, if they're not, then I would certainly, again, as a parent, advise you to send your child to school. Thank you very, very much.